Pretty much every game that you've ever played has something called the main game loop. This is a simple wall loop and it handles everything that goes on inside of the game. Typically, this loop will have six parts to it. Okay, so let's just say that this is our window. The first thing the loop does is check for window events. For example, it checks whether the X button has been pressed and therefore closing the window and the game. The next thing it does is it completely clears the window of all colour. The next thing it will do is check for user input. For example, if the right arrow key is pressed, it might increase the X velocity of the player by 5 or something. The next thing it will do is update the game. This is actually where the bulk of the game logic happens. For example, it might change the position of the player based on its velocity. Or in a game like Minecraft, dirt blocks might turn into grass blocks. Or it might check if an enemy is dead and then remove it from the scene of the game. Next, it will draw everything in the game. This draws everything in the scene one thing at a time. This is all drawn to an off-screen buffer. And then finally, it displays the off-screen buffer onto the window, which allows the user to see what's in the scene. And you know, this all happens a stupid ridiculous number of times every second. For example, if your game is running at 60 frames per second, then this happens 60 times every second. Okay, so now let's actually jump into the code. So in the code, the first thing I want you to do is just delete all this, because we don't need it anymore. Okay, anyways, before we can actually have a game loop, we actually need to create a window. So I'm going to go to File, New, File, Header File. I'm going to call this Header File Display. Display. And I'm just going to put it into the Source folder. In this header file, we just need to include one header, and that is SFML Graphics. This will allow us to create a window. So we're actually going to be storing our display in a namespace. Let's create a namespace and call it display. So this namespace is going to have several functions. The first function is just going to be called init. This will initialize our window. It's also going to have a function to clear the window. It's also going to have a function to update or display the window. We also need a function to check window events. So this is going to be void check window events. Uh, we also need a function to say whether the window is open or not, so this is going to return a boolean, and this is going to be called is open. We also need two integers to say the width and the height of the window, so let's just make these const expr. int height is equal to 720, const expr int width is equal to 1280. You can make these any number you want to, depending on how big you want your window to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and press F11. This will automatically create the .cpp file so we can actually implement the functions. The first thing I'm going to do is actually include the display header. I'm then going to create the display namespace. So that's namespace display. I'm then just going to copy and paste all of these functions into the namespace. And then I'm just going to create bodies for all of these functions. We just need to include the extra header here, which is memory. So let's just include memory. So SFML provides a cross-platform way for us to open a window to draw onto. This is called the SF Render Window. As soon as we create an object of this type, it will open a window straight away. However, this sometimes causes problems. This is why we're going to be using a unique pointer to a SF Render Window, so we can actually control when the window is initialized. So to do this, we just have to say STD, unique pointer, or unique footer. SF render window, and we're just going to be calling it window. And we're going to initialize this unique pointer in the init function. To do this, we just have to say window is equal to std make unique SF render window. And then we have to put in the arguments for the SF render window in the arguments there. This function takes in two arguments. The first argument is SF video mode, and this just says how big we want our window to be. And this is just width and height. And the second argument is what we want our window to be named, and we're just going to be calling it window. So for the clear function, we can just call a function directly from the SF window window, so that's just window clear, and this will clear the window to black. For the display function, we can just call another function directly from SF window window, and that's just going to be window display. And this will basically display whatever we have drawn to the window onto the window. Is open is going to tell us whether the window is actually open or not. And again, we can just call a function directly from the render window class. So that's just window is open. 
and we just have to return that. So for checking window events, we have to use an object called SF events. We then just have to ask the window, hey window, what window events are currently happening? The window will then check each type of window event, for example, whether the X button is being pressed, and then store the results in the SF event object. And then us, the programmers, just have to handle these events. So like I said, the first thing we need to do here is create an SF event object. And I'm just going to be calling my SF event E. We then just have to ask the window what events are happening. So to do this, we have to say while window poll event E. And this will store the result of the current window event in the SF event object E. We then just have to handle the events which we want to handle. For example, we want to check whether the X button is being pressed and then close the window if it is. And to do this, we just have to say if e.type is equal to sf event closed window close. And this will close the window if the X button is pressed. And there we have it. For now, this is all we actually need in our display namespace. But now we need a class to actually use this. So let's go ahead and create a new header file. This header file is going to be called application.h and it's going to be in the source folder of course. And so to create the application class we just have to say class application and then I'm just going to put public and private sections in this. So for now the application class is just going to have two things. The first thing it's going to have is a constructor. And the second thing it's going to have is a function called void run main loop. And this function is going to be where we store our main loop of the game. I'm now going to press F11 to create the .cpp file so we can implement this class. So first of all, of course, include the header, which is just application.h. And then I'm just going to right click, insert all class methods of our implementation. And this just automatically creates empty functions for us. In this file, I'm just going to include one more header, which is display.h, so we can use the display namespace in this file. And then in the constructor of the application class, I'm just going to call display init. And this will initialize and open up our window. So now let's actually create the main loop of the game. So our game is going to be running while the display is open. So let's just create a while loop here, and it's going to be looping while display is open. So remember, at the start of the episode, I said that the main loop has six parts to it. Check window events, clear the window, get input from the player, update the game, draw the game, and then display what has been drawn. So let's go ahead and do this now. So first of all, we have to check window events. And to do this, we just have to say display, check window events. We then have to clear the window. And again, that's just display clear. So the next three parts of our main game loop is input, update, and draw, but we're not going to be doing that just yet. That's going to be coming in the next episode. So anyways, the final part of our main game loop is just display, display, and this will display to our window whatever has been drawn. So that is our main game loop complete now. So let's go back into main.cpp and include the application.h header file. Let's just include application.h. We then need to create an application object, so that's just application, let's just call it app. And then we just have to call app run main loop. So now if you press the yellow cog button up here to build our project and then click run, we should get a window that we can move around and close when we are done with it. And there we have it, that's our display name space and the main game loop completed. So yeah, that's going to be all for this episode, thank you for watching and goodbye.